from the past 72 calls at Chitante. It is morning at NTV and it's time for the sports update. My name is Aisha Nasanga. The Uganda Cobs is what we start off with at the under 23 championship qualifier that will be uh, going on this particular weekend. On Saturday, 1st August, the Cobs have a huge task trying to overturn a 4-0 aggregate. Remember, they went down to Alexandria, lost 4-0 to Egypt. Uh, Egypt is already in the country and the Cobs will be trying to overturn that uh, and be able to put up a reasonable score. They had a friendly earlier in the week against Express. Uh, they were not able to win that one, eventually ending it 2-1 one old draw uh, by Coach Mitchell said they need to try at the very least. 4-0 is a huge margin against Egypt, but they will be giving it a try on the 1st of August. Away from uh, the Uganda Cobs and staying with football, the Sekafa Kagame Cup. The semi-finals are on today uh, because KCC will be up against Azam and then of course Khartoum will be up against Goma here down in Dar es Salaam. It's definitely uh, a time for reflection for KCC uh, from being a team that could not score a goal but going into a quarter-final and eventually scoring three and then uh, going into a semi-final where they will need to beat up on Azam. Azam, remember, was in the same group as KCC and did beat up on them uh, by 1-0 in the group stages. So for KCC, uh, it will be payback time, or at this stage, uh, Azam could do a double over them. So that game is at uh, 2 p.m. And then, of course, Khartoum up against Gumahia, uh, the Kenya champions, will be at 4 p.m. And uh, uh, that's a bit of the football that will be going on. Also this weekend, uh, with the football, I know for a fact Villa at 40, the parties this weekend, uh, they have a lot of fanfare involved. They have a party to celebrate 40 years of existence. They've won quite a number, a number of uh, trophies as a club and I think for Villa uh, having signed uh, that Spanish coach uh, they will be hoping to go further and further and also hopefully uh, win a league title while they are at it so that part is on this particular weekend and uh, ASL National Basketball League will also be going on this weekend. On Friday today, Magic Stormers will be up against Gladiators and Warriors will be up against KIU Titans. The Titans have won almost everything. They assembled a squad at the start of the season and boy have they come good uh, towards the end of the season. It's second round and they don't look like they are about to stop. They've gelled as a team and against Warriors, uh, Warriors will need to work pretty hard uh, to beat up on this KIU side. And on Sunday, KCC will be up against against Amazon Rhinos, A1 Challenge come up against the UCU Lady Cannons, and then of course Charging Rhinos will take on UCU Cannons, while City Oil as the champions will be up against Bushcourt. Uh, those games are at YMCA on Sunday, uh, and that's a bit of the basketball fixtures that you should expect over the weekend. And over the weekend as well, we'll be flagging off a national team because the Netball She Cranes will be heading uh, to Sydney, Australia to participate in the Netball World Cup. Uh, that is expected to take place between 7th and the 16th of August. Remember, the final team was out. Uh, we know that dropped players, three of them were dropped. It's a 12 uh, squad of girls, and they will be going down to Sydney, Australia. They are in the same group as Fiji, Zambia, and Wales, and they will be trying to get out of that group and hopefully go that distance uh, in the World Cup. Remember, uh, the netball has not been in the World Cup since 1978. So this is a huge feat for them uh, to try and overturn that particular one. Lots happening on the local scene. This might not be as local as you'd want, but the KCB Randa Mountain Gorilla Rally is also on this particular weekend. Uganda has sent a strong contingent of, of drivers because 14 drivers in total will be down uh, in Rwanda to try and uh, win it. And there's lots of competition in terms of uh, Jesse Singh will be down there. Uh, Jesse Shathe as well is going to be competing down there. Uh, the, uh, Jesse Singh is the African champion. Uh, and then of of course, uh, for Uganda, Desh Kananura, who came in third in that Fort Porter Rally, is going to be down there. John Consta, who finished first in the Fort Porter Rally, is also going to be uh, down there, of course. Musa Kabega, uh, you expect Ismail Otega, as well as uh, Pole Pole, uh, also in there. And uh, Haji Sempeva also uh, makes the squad of the drivers that will be heading down uh, to Rwanda. They're already there. They are geared up and trying to uh, win it for almost everyone else uh, in there. For them, it's about participation and driving with some of the best on the continent, and it will come good for them uh, in terms of um, how much experience they can pick up on from there. We'll leave the local sport at that and jump into a bit of international sport um, today. The Athletics Diamond League. Um, the 
12th of the 12th round uh, heads into Stockholm uh, where of course we expect Shelly Ann Fraser Prize uh, who will be competing for the first time since winning the 100 meters in Paris three weeks ago so uh, for her it's going to be a competition between her and Blessing of Barry uh, who has been running very well that 100 meters of course you cannot forget and not talk about uh, Usain Bolt who ran um, a beautiful 100 meters at London not too far ago a week or so ago um, where he was able to not break a record but I think uh, Usain Bolt is back uh, and it will be interesting to see how he will fare uh, come the Beijing Championships uh, when everyone lines up like Justin Gatlin and everyone else. So uh, the Diamond League is on tonight so you should expect that. Uh, a couple of people are already assured of places there. I think Justin Gatlin has been doing quite very well in the 100 meters. Uh, you can't look far past Kirani James when it comes to the 400 meters and of course Nigel Amos who beat up on uh, Rudisha, David Rudisha uh, in London. He will be competing in the 800 meters as well uh, so for Shelly Ann Fraser uh, it's going to be a tough one in the 100 meters as well and uh, away from the athletics uh, we jump into a bit of that platinum bid for presidency we've talked about it the whole week uh, and how far it will go but of course uh, platinum has been criticized on a couple of occasions uh, by almost everyone else by Prince Ali uh, bin Hussein as well as uh, Musa Biliti who claim uh, and a quote uh, that um, a member of the Jordanian royal family added that uh, they need a new FIFA uh, to come in and not Platini because they feel that uh, he's been, he's not independent and he's been tainted uh, by the practices of the past, especially when it comes to FIFA and to FIFA, excuse me, and what they've been doing uh, in the past. So it will be interesting to see who backs him and how far he will go with this bid. Uh, and as I said in the past, it's going to be very difficult uh, for him to go through eventually. Uh, and then, of course, away from that this weekend or so, the Community Shield Arsenal have been winning trophies. They've got two so far in the bag. They won the Asia Trophy, they won the Emirates Cup, and they have a shot at winning the FA Community Shield uh, against Chelsea this weekend as well. Uh, of course, they will be fielding a full strength side. Uh, and of course, for Pet Cech, uh, who is the goalkeeper now at Arsenal, it will be a return to uh, his um, old club. So it will be interesting to see how they hold up. That one, that game is on this weekend on Saturday. So that is one to watch out for. We cannot live without talking about the golf and the reason why we are in this beautiful outdoors because uh, day two of the leaderboard uh, is interesting so far because today an amateur has come in and has dominated uh, the grounds. He knows how to win it uh, because he won it a week ago with the amateur category in the Uganda Open. And then he comes today. Um, yesterday he didn't do too badly, shoot, shooting a 73. And then of course he came today and shot a 65. I'm talking about Ronald Otile, uh, the man of the moment. And it's definitely a time for him to celebrate because he says he's under no pressure. He's been there, done that. No one expects him to do well. No one has any expectations for him. He's an amateur player. And he comes here at the Uganda Open on day two and shoots at 65. Two shots shy of the course record, if I must add, which stands at 63. So uh, for Ronald Otile, might not be top of the leaderboard, but I think definitely when that cut comes in, he's definitely going to be among the top when it comes to the pressure group. So um, overall, a very good round for him, but the leaderboard still maintains uh, Modalisto Muthia, uh, the man from Zambia, yesterday shot at 67. So for him, he's still holding very steady up on top of the leaderboard. And um, a couple of Ugandans, and I think the big shocker, uh, from day two has got to be the fact that Deo Akope, who is the defending champion, has not made the cut. Uh, that is a huge, um, huge uh, news coming in from day two uh, because he's not made the cut and he's the defending champion, knows this ground very well, um, but he did not fare too well on day one and I think day two as well, the results did not favor him. So um, a couple of other Ugandans making the cut, you look at Haman Mutawa, you look at uh, uh, Willie Deo that are also making the cut. So um, for a lot of everyone else and the Kenyans and um, a, a couple of Randy's players and the South Africans, it's going to be tough one. Some big names not making the cut, including Deo Akope and including Greg Snow as well, uh, the man from Kenya who has dominated in the Kenyan Open before, uh, but also not failing to make the cut here in Uganda. So um, that just about wraps up with the golf and we expect a lot more action from over the weekend. We'll be bringing it to you 
as it happens. And um, from the course here at Chitente, past 72, my name is Aisha Nasanga, and uh, have a good weekend.